Um, so these are six women who have graduated from BYU's accounting program and are all at different places in their careers. So I want to start off the panel, maybe just starting with Holly, and briefly, if you, each of you could introduce yourselves and just tell us a little bit about yourselves and where you're working now, or if you're not working, what you're doing. And then I have a couple questions prepared, but we would love for any of you to be able to ask questions after as well. Okay, so Holly. Hi, so I'm Holly Fletcher. Um, I graduated with my bachelor's in accountancy um, 15 years ago, December of 1999. Um, I had worked as a student doing bookkeeping for a, a little company here in town. And then when I graduated, I got a full-time job um, at a, a local public accounting firm here. I worked for them for about a year and a half, just through two tax seasons, loved it. Uh, gained valuable experience there. I love the busyness of tax work. Um, my husband was going through the MAC program at the time, so when he graduated, we decided to accept a position in the Northwest for him. And when we moved up there, uh, found out we were expecting our first child, and that was the end of my career at this point. And, and so I've um, been staying at home with our five children. So. All right, I'm Laura Torgerson. And I think I'm the oldest on the panel. <laughs> um, I graduated back in 1988 with my master's in tax. And I worked for KPMG um, in Irvine back when they were eight, account, big eight accounting firms. Um, and then I left and I was a tax director at West Corp, which was a financial company also in Irvine. And then I had actually had a few years off and was home with my boys. And then I went back to work and I now work as a senior tax manager. Um, I work part-time, I work 24 hours a week, and I work from home three days a week, so it's great. And I also work part-time, um, part of the time I was a tax director at West Corp. So that's kind of my story, and I have two boys here at BYU now, so and one of them's in Accounting 200, so maybe you'll see him. <laughs> Hi, I'm Trish Alderman, I graduated with my bachelor's in 99. And I started with Deloitte Tax San Francisco, was out there full time for about six years and then went to, I just consulted when I had my first child and consulted for a few years. And then when we moved to Park City, we, um, I retired, I thought. Um, and so I haven't been working for about nine years and then I, about a year ago I started part time. So right now I work for a company called HCBT out of LA um, and I work about 15 to 18 hours a week in tax. We do a lot of consulting, that kind of stuff. Um, I have four kids, and yeah, that's why. So I'm actually Brittany Brown, not Brittany Lemke. So if you can't find me on Facebook, that's why. But my email address still says Brittany Lemke, so it was a very honest mistake. <laughs> so I'm probably the most recent graduate. I graduated in 2010, so fairly new. I actually went through the accounting program here as a single mom. So the whole time I was here, the whole like work-life balance was just paramount on my mind. So those of you who feel that way, like I get you. So I went to KPMG and then I went to Squire, which is a local accounting firm uh, for a little while. And I worked in their QuickBooks consulting group and did some, um, advisory things and then I left Squire to be the CFO of one of their clients and that was that is a really really great experience I'm only now transitioning off of that um, so now what I do is I actually own a business and we um, we hire accountants who want to work from home basically so we have we do automated outsourced accounting for other companies and we hire all employees who are accounting or on their way to that who want to work from home. And everything is cloud-based and we're spreading across the country right now. So if that's something that interests you, come talk to me afterwards. Thanks. My name is Paige Gepfert. I graduated in 2004 with my master's in tax. And I work and live in Chicago. Um, I have been at a few different firms. I started my career out at Deloitte in Chicago, but I now work for McGladry, which probably none of you have heard of because they do not have any offices here in Utah, but we are the fifth largest accounting firm in the nation right behind the big four. 
Um, I specialize in estate gift and trust tax and work with really wealthy families that are worth between $50 million and $500 million. So that's kind of my client base. I have worked full-time my entire career for the last 11 years. I'm a senior tax manager, and my husband is a stay-at-home dad. I have two kids, a five-year-old and a two-year-old. My name is Jen Hines. I graduated with my master's in tax in 2001. I graduated along with my husband, um, who was in the professional STEM of accounting. We graduated together and we had done our internships in California and kind of at the last minute decided to take offers in Dallas, Texas. And so I worked in um, the personal financial services group at PricewaterhouseCoopers for a couple of years. And after that, I um, followed my husband over to Goldman Sachs. We were both there for a couple of years. I did private wealth management there. And then I had my first child and stayed home with her for several years. I have four children now who are 11, 9, 7, and 3. And um, throughout that time staying at home, I had done some seasonal tax work just because I'm think accounting is fun. So I wanted to do that. So I did that a little bit seasonally. And um, about five months ago, I went back to work full time for Crystal Charity Ball, which is a charity a company in Dallas. And we raise money for children's charities in Dallas County and um, purported to be the largest fundraiser of children's charities in the country. And it's fun. Okay, thank you. That helps us just to know where you are in your experiences. So and as many of you can answer this question, or just a few of you, whatever you'd like, but some of you touched on this, but I think we'd love to hear maybe some of the challenges that you encountered as you tried to adjust your career, as your life changed, and then what lessons you learned as you tried to make those adjustments. I um, you know, had always wanted to be in public accounting. I, I thought maybe I could be a partner someday, but I didn't really know for sure if I was going to be doing, doing it full-time forever. Um, my husband lost his job in the recession in 2009, and boy was I glad I had my accounting degree because <clears throat> I knew that I could support our family um, while he was looking for a job, but he couldn't find a job. So we decided to start our family, and he was going to stay home full-time with the kids, and my biggest struggle at the beginning was finding a firm that was going to let me work flexibly. So I left the firm that I was at. I'd been with them for four years because they weren't allowing me to do what I wanted to do. And I found a firm that was able to work with me and started for them kind of a program that allows people to telecommute from home. And I've been doing it for five years now. And, you know, there are people, there are companies out there that are going to want to help you and conform to whatever you need. You just need to find it. So I've talked to, I mean, so many of the people on this panel have said not only do they telecommute, but or their business telecommutes. Like Laura said that her business was happy to hire any accountant that worked from home. So what I really learned, so although I went through the accounting program here as a single mom, I did get remarried and now I have five kids instead of just three, including like two babies right now. So it has been really challenging and finding the ability to kind of balance that has been really challenging. But because of because of the nature of accounting and because of so many things now that it can be cloud-based, um, accounting really doesn't, for the most part, require you to sit in front of somebody as much as it requires you to sit in front of a computer, which can be done from home or from an office just as easily. And I really like what you said, that if, that if where you're working doesn't accommodate that, then go find a place that will, because it really is the wave of the future in accounting. I was going to say, too, um, I've been really lucky because the places I've worked for, I think if you become valuable, they're really willing to be flexible and make arrangements. Um, when I worked for West Corp, I just came to them and said, I'm going to have a baby. I'd like to work from home. And so we that was when it was first kind of coming up where you could take laptops and they had docking stations, which it doesn't really exist that much anymore. But so we came up with a plan where I worked four hours in the office and four hours from home. And um, I think with technology, it's just become so much more advanced. But I think the part that's kind of the hardest for me is I was super competitive. Like I wanted all the A's, I wanted the best grade in the class. And then when you start looking at working part time or it's, it's a little bit harder to be the best because there's other people that will work those full time hours. And so you had to find a different way to be, I don't know, 
stand out a little bit and you have to kind of let your ego go and say, hey, my family's more important than moving up the ladder a little bit. So that's the part for me. I kind of had to let go of my ego a little bit and say, hey, in the long run, this is a better road for me. And it's actually worked out a lot better than I, I don't want the stress of the kind of life you have to kind of be as a partner where you're on call. I get to work lots, all the hours I want or as little as I want. And I get to work with a lot of great clients. But man, I made it to all my boys volleyball and basketball games and all my girls things. I have five kids and they've done a lot of stuff and I've been able to go to all of it. So, but you do have to kind of let go of your ego. I, I think I do, you do. Okay, thank you. Yeah, anyone else you can add? Weigh in real quick. Perfect. You know, so I, when I started, I, I'd worked full time and I had my first child, I decided, okay, I'll just consult during busy season or whatever. And, and that worked fine. But one of the things that I found challenging is for the people did, you know, they, and maybe this has also changed over time, I think, but 10 years ago, 11 years ago, work-life balance, I don't think the industry was very good at. Um, and and it, I think even just overall, people weren't, I think the term is a little tricky, right? It kind of implies that you can be doing both at the same time. But what I've, under, what I've come to understand um, is that I either had to be on as a mom or I had to be on at work. You can't be halfway of either one or you're not going to do either one very well. You'll be frustrated at home and you'll be frustrated at work and someone might be frustrated with you. Um, and that's where for me and for our family, it was just the time, you know what, that's enough. I, I want to focus on my family for now. But going back into accounting a year ago, what I wanted, I knew how demanding public accounting, what, what they wanted out of me, my blood, sweat, and tears. Um, but I knew what I was going to give them and what I wouldn't give them. And so when I was interviewing about a year ago, I was very deliberate about what I said I would give them, what hours I would let them have. And so, like you were saying, finding a, a firm that's willing to work with you. Because I said, look, I want to be there in the morning when my kids go to school. And I want to be there as soon as they get home. I don't want someone else there. And so I will give you from 9 o'clock until 2.30, and that is it. If you want to get me after hours, you don't get me. Every once in a while, yes, that it comes in. But if you w are willing to guard that, then I'll work for you. If it doesn't work, no problem. We'll go find somewhere else. And, and I did. I mean, we, I talked with Goldman Sachs, and that's not really something they do all that well. <laughs> and, and they're like, oh, well, yeah, I mean, they were willing so to give it a whirl, but I thought, I don't want to be your guinea pig, you know. So we, I did find a firm that said, yeah, that's great. We'll take you. And I only work three days a week. So it was three days a week for these hours. If you want that, great. And, and I think that, like you're saying, like, know what you want and then define that. And you will find a firm. You can find that situation. Um, at least for me, those four years paid off in enormous ways because I was home for eight years, enjoyed my children so much and had such a break that I really wanted to go back. And then when I did go back and interviewed, they had no problem at all with my eight year hiatus and actually kind of loved that about my resume that while wow, you went and focused on your children and have them in a good spot now where you can take some time to do something that is important to you and your career path. And so, um, and I did the same thing as Trish that when I went and interviewed, they gave me a pay offer and instead of negotiating on the back end with pay, I negotiated with my hours. And I said, that pay is fine, but I want, you know, to come in later and leave earlier. And that worked and they were fine with that. So just remind yourselves when you first get out and when you are with those big CPA firms that, um, you know, maybe 10 years down the road, you can remember this panel and that you'll have some more flexibility and some more, um, you know, autonomy in what you do. For those of you who have taken complete breaks from working, how have you stayed connected professionally so that transitioning back into the workplace was easier? I didn't. I did I not stay say, connected at all. <laughs> like, I was, I'll be totally honest. <laughs> like, literally not a lick. Um, so I have my, my CPA is in California and they have an inactive status. Um, I have a cousin who's a Utah CPA. They do not have an inactive status. So she, she has, she's pregnant with her fifth child right now. She has no plan of ever working again, but in order to keep her CPA, she has to keep up these CPE hours, which is a beast when you have five little children, or four and a half little children. And um, so I've really appreciated the California because now I'm just working on my CPE to get it back. And that's one of the things I was super intimidated. I didn't know if anyone would want me because I'd taken off, not only had I taken off time, but I'd turned it off too. So I was pleasantly surprised that they, they still valued me 
just as much, even though I had completely turned off that. And and I'd be curious about you. I mean, have you? I'm on? not. I'm not really connected. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's that's okay. Yeah. But um, I think BYU and having the women of accountancy, um, you know, committee and organization, it would be very easy for me to be reconnected mm -hmm. as soon as I want to. You know, and I've met these ladies here. I've learned things already tonight. When I'm ready to go back, it's, I'm confident I can do so easily. Yeah. I think probably as a panel, we would all agree that when you're having your babies and your children, it's more important to connect with them than with whoever else might be in your future. I don't know. Just take it off. Well, now you have LinkedIn, and it makes it easier. Yeah, there are easier way ways easier. to do it now. Yeah. I did the Jennifer, same thing. I went in a job. Yeah. I went in active too, and yeah. So I have an idea of how you could stay connected if it was important to you, although I agree with all of these. If you have the right education and the right credentials going into it, you have really no problem getting back into yeah. the workforce. <clears throat> so one of the things I discovered is that um, during some of the, because I actually took a hiatus after I left Squire before I went and became the CFO for one of their clients. I actually had about 10 months that I was kind of twiddling my thumbs. I think I even like pulled one of my kids out to homeschool him because I was like, surely I need to do something productive. <laughs> like seriously. So one of the things that would really help, it's really easy to do from home, is just find somebody who wants you to be a bookkeeper for them. And it will keep you, it'll start to teach you some of the tools of the industry, because QuickBooks, tax is a great way to get back in, but not everybody's into taxes. I went audit track because taxes kind of make me want to shoot myself in the head, but not everybody feels that way. And so if you didn't go tax track, then how do you stay connected? You learn the tools of your industry. And QuickBooks is a great tool to learn and, and you can find clients very easily who will let you just do books for them and then literally you have something on your resume and you're doing something interesting and it can grow into something great basically so it's one great way to stay connected if that's important to you well, and can I make one other company my brother is uh, an HR manager and when I was going back I was I was like what do I put on my LinkedIn like I've been at home and he said that's what you put on your LinkedIn. Make yeah. sure that it's very clear what right. you were doing when you weren't working so it doesn't look like you're a slouch. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But be very clear about it and people completely respect that. Respect so that. I thought that was a good thing to know that put it on your resume and, and be proud of it. Yep. You know, awesome. people get it. So my question is specifically about the CPA exam and being certified. Um, I don't know if all of you are CPA certified, but I know there are women probably wondering if that's even... Um, a good track for them, or if they weren't CPA certified, how difficult would it be to leave an industry, be a mom for a few years, and then come back with with no CPA certification? So I would have to say getting the CPA exam was kind of a nightmare, and the more you can do that right after you get out of school, the Just less the right nightmare away. it will yeah. be. Like if you take a long break and you start from scratch with this entire knowledge base, it will be so daunting you may not do it. But you can go and get your CPA. When I was taking um, the test here in Utah, I discovered that I could take the test and then I could like spend 10 years getting the hours that I needed before I would lose those tests. So I would say like get out of school, get it taken care of, and then you're so much more marketable when you go to get back into the industry. So I'd say go for it. I, I'm CPA certified. Or I'll yeah. I'm, I'm not. I, I graduated right before it switched for Washington State where you had to have 150 hours. And so I didn't, um, I had, I kind of missed my opportunity to sit for that. I, and I will never, I will never attempt to sit for the CPA exam. <laughs> like she said, I mean, take it as soon as you can after studying it. Um, I have no desire to go down that road again. So, But I do think you're more marketable than you think. I right. mean, that That's CPA true. isn't exactly like the... Yeah, it's not the only way to be marketable. Um, my sister-in-law, she graduated with us um, with her undergrad, and she never got her CPA. She worked in industry and finance and stuff like that. Um, and she works a ton from home. She's super marketable. Just even the fact that you, that you graduated from BYU in the BYU program, that holds a ton of clout. So much clout. Out there. So. And realistically, a lot of you may start out in public accounting but I'm sure there's statistics on this that down the road, a lot of the graduates will not be working. They'll be out in industry, they'll be entrepreneurs, they will be, you know, 
accounting is, I mean, there's a reason why it's called the language of business. Getting an accounting degree will benefit your life in so many different ways. Your family, your church life, your community. I mean, it is, I would be so happy if one of my daughters came home and says, I'm going to major in accounting and then never worked in it because she has it in her back pocket. It is such a fabulous degree to, I mean, whether you, you use it right out of college or you come back to it, it is so relevant. I, yeah, it's life applicable. So I've done a lot of interviewing for the firms I've worked at. I've worked at Deloitte, Grant Thornton, McLadry, a couple other ones too. Um, and the one thing I can tell you about not having your CPA license is that it's going to limit uh, you, your ability to progress above a certain level. Most firms won't let you become a manager if you're not a CPA. So we have definitely hired people who have left the workforce, have come back, are not do not have a CPA license, but they won't ever be able to get promoted above a certain level unless they have it. Yeah, I would say that too, because I work for a CPA firm, and if you don't have a CPA license, you're not going to be able to rise as well, and you won't get paid as well either. Right. I mean, that, it limits how much you get paid. Right. So. so if you have the ability, and if it makes sense for you, do it. Yeah. And do it right after school, because it's the best possible time to take that on. Yeah. I don't think any of us would ever take it again. No, no way. No. <laughs> Not a million years. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Did everyone hear that? 85% of students who graduate pass the exam? Okay. Yeah, You'll think. be more prepared than you might think. Right. Yeah. Okay. Great question. Does anyone else have a question they want to ask the panel? Um, so I just kind of feel like there's a stereotype that girls always do tax and boys do audit. Uh, so I'm just curious. I'm kind of looking more into audit. And I know, Brittany, you said you did audit. I, don't, I didn't catch if anyone else did. But kind of how do you feel like you were able to overcome that stereotype? And how do you feel like it's fit in your life with flexibility? I think that might be a BYU stereotype. I don't know that it's that way out. In the... Did anyone else do audit? No, no one else did audit. No. Oh, man. <laughs> um... <laughs> yeah, I, you know what, you either love tax or you just don't. And, the re and, and it's the funniest thing, like if you're a CPA, everyone and their dog assumes you do taxes. And I get so tired of telling people, no, I don't do taxes. Stop asking me those questions. <laughs> <laughs> so um, audit was a great fit for me. And if you decide to go audit, unless you're going to go public accounting, Consulting is probably going to be a natural progression for you because if you go CPA firm, audit and being an auditor and stuff like that makes great sense. But if you're not working for a CPA firm, then what do you do with an audit background? Well, what I found is it's made me a great advisor. It's made me a great consultant. I can understand um, you know, what the auditors are looking for. I can understand what bankers are looking for. I understand how to cook the books or not, right? Like. <laughs> So basically, like audit is a great route if for a woman. Honestly, in a lot of ways, I mean, you can run a great tax practice from home and it lends itself exceptionally well to doing work from home. But as a auditor, probably consulting, advising, um, QuickBooks training, different things like that is, is probably going to be a great career path for you if you're not in public accounting. These are great questions. Isn't this fun to just be able to ask and kind of soak in this years of wisdom that none of us have. <laughs> I was wondering uh, how many of you, so what you've noticed between the difference of a bachelor's of accounting degree and a master's of accounting degree, and if there has been a significant benefit to getting one or the other. Well, I was really lucky because um, I actually went on a mission and I kind of left right in between, like I was just starting my master's and then I came back and so um, and when I came back, there was only two women, me and one other person who we both went on missions at the same time. And she's the only other one I knew in the whole program because everyone else had graduated, right? Um, that was when girls went when they're 21. So everyone else had left and it was just the two of us. And um, so we both got our masters. Well, we happened to do it right when the tax code changed in 1986, Reagan changed everything. And so when we went out, I kept getting pulled into the um, partner's offices and they were asking me all these questions about the tax law. And I was pretty intimidated because I was just out of school. But the training you get here, when you're partners, you have a lot of experience that counts a lot. But when they totally changed the tax law, 
I found that I had a lot of, as much um, knowledge as some of those partners did. And so for me, the masters made a huge difference and the partners were really looking for the people who had the masters because they had that kind of research skills and the ability to go out and um, understand the law that I know I wouldn't have had as a bachelor's. I mean, you just didn't get that same kind of in-depth training. So for me, it made a difference. I don't know what it have been like without it, but it definitely made it really valuable. I think the biggest difference that I see is, first of all, a lot of states, you, you know, you're required to have a certain number of credit hours to sit for the CPA exam. So kind of getting the master's degree is the next step so you can sit for it. But um, I think you're probably going to get paid more right out of college if you have your master's degree too. Uh, my firm, they actually uh, team with DePaul University in Chicago. And anybody who hasn't gotten their master's degree before joining our firm ends up going to DePaul and getting their master's degree while they're working. And it is painful. So get it done now. Kind of like the CPA exam that they were saying, you know, get it. If, if you're even thinking about getting it, if you can do it, apply and try to get in and just get it done because it'll make your life easier. It will. Yeah. And I think that answer is kind of specific to what do you want out of it? I mean, are you trying to, what do you want out of your career? Because if you're trying to say, okay, well, I want to be in tax or audit or whatever, and I want to really stay there, then yeah, it makes a ton of sense. And, and like she said, Deloitte, when I was in San Francisco and also, because I have my undergrad, um, our, our firm now, every, everybody sends you back to get your master's. They, that's just what they would like you to do. Because, and most states have now, it's required to get your CPA exam. So I think it kind of depends on what you're actually going for. You know, whether, do you want to stay public accounting? You know, it's a, I don't know why you wouldn't if you can. Um, but if you don't really know, then you know, I think it's pretty individual too. Like, what feels right? I just had a question. Uh... So I know this isn't a perfect world, but um, if you were to try to go the um, big four route, is there a prime time when you would want to try to start a family? Or um, is it just kind of uh, when you feel? Or um, when would you recommend a woman to try to start a family if she could perfectly plan it? <laughs> Perfectly planned, right? <laughs> 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 the problem is life happens <laughs> yeah. in spite of us. That's not <laughs> a bigger problem. Yeah. I have no idea how to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, I'll speak to you then because I did kind of plan it. <laughs> so because um, I actually kind of thought, you know, because I was married, my husband and I got married, we met in the junior corps and then got married the summer after the junior corps. So then we were married um, together for two years at BYU. And so I didn't really necessarily want to have a career. I just wanted to have kids right away. So I just kind of took the PricewaterhouseCoopers offer because I thought, well, I'll just do that for just a little while until I have my baby. And then I couldn't get pregnant. And so um, I was there for a couple of years and then went to Goldman Sachs for a couple of years. And, um, but then I did plan it. <laughs> so we went ahead and got some help and started our family. And so for me, I had about four years of work experience and I was very happy with that. And I feel like that was plenty that I was able to take my break and go back and it was relevant experience. So that worked out really well for us, but that was yeah. me. <laughs> I think the only comment maybe I can make is, you know, every state I think is different in terms of their Family Medical Leave Act and how long you need to be at a firm before your job is protected if you leave for maternity leave. So, you know, that might be a consideration that, you know, maybe if you're planning on starting a job and having a baby like six months later, that might, there might be an issue with being employed still once, if you do go back to the workforce. Um, but I think that it's, it's really kind of your decision about when you want to start your yeah. family and how you decide to do that with your husband. Yeah. I was going to say, sometimes I think as women, we have a tendency to kind of want to know, you know, what did you do and what did you do? What should I do? And that's definitely one that you have to pray about and think about and feel about and it'll be very individual. But if because you're an accountant you want a clean number answer, <laughs> I would say that you have a 2,000 hour requirement to get your CPA, so if that's on your target, it's a nice clean place to say, got my 2,000 hours, which is a couple of years of working basically, and then you can like leave and go do your own and work from home if you wanted to because you have your CPA. Like it, it's a nice clean breaking point. 
And in the perfect world where you get to choose like the month you have your baby, avoid (laughs) any deadlines whatsoever because birthdays for the rest of your career will not be full. In a perfect world. Yeah, Yeah, my son's birthday is in March and we always celebrated his birthday. After I went back to work, he always had a birthday party at the end of April. So, and his friends just always knew and they were totally cool that, but, and he was a good sport. (laughs) Okay. I have a question for you. Um, what challenges have you encountered or have you, like it's the same maybe, coming into a field? I guess from BYU, there is, are many more men in this field than women, but that's not necessarily the way it is in the workforce. But what kind of challenges or just unique things have you encountered being a woman in the accounting field? I don't like to golf. But (laughs) I'm learning how to golf. I've been taking golf lessons. I truly wish I had taken golf while I was at BYU. I think that was an option when you were in the program, right? Is it still an option? It is. I took it and it did nothing. It did nothing. Okay. (laughs) At least maybe you would have known the lingo. But at least at my firm, golf is a big thing. People take clients out golfing. And if, you know, if you're trying to move up the ranks, you know, the men like to golf. So that is a barrier. (laughs) Um, The other thing, you know, I've had two kids while I've been working full time and I'm sorry for the men in the room, but figuring out pumping at working when you have a lot of men bosses and, um, you know, having people ask you, what are you leaving? What bag, what bag is that? You're like, please (laughs) don't ask me. I mean like sanitizing things and it's just not fun to do. So that, I think that's a struggle, but (laughs) <laughs> I would add to, I mean, I left um, the, the accounting profession, you know, before I had kids, so I didn't um, have that kind of situation. But my husband did graduate from the MAC program, and the majority of his career, he has worked mainly with women. So this, I mean, maybe in, at BYU it is male-dominated, but in the professional world, that is not necessarily the case. And most of his superiors have been female, so I mean... Doors are open. You know, sky's the limit. I mean, if you want to go for it, go for it. I was just going to say, it's come a long way, too. I mean, I'm, I'm older than everyone here. When I first started working, women had to wear skirts. You could not wear pants to work. It was only the men that were <laughs> to work. And I remember, uh, and we, they had, like, one female partner in the office, and I was in a big office. So it's come a long way. I remember when we could wear pants. It was, it was a big deal. So I, you probably never encounter that. But So it's come a long way for the difference. And I think women, I think they were looking for ways to promote women because of that. And so I, I don't think there's really much stopping you now other than I did the same thing with the pumping. And it really is, you know, you have to talk to people and set up those rooms and they're all men. So, so my, all of my full-time career was in San Francisco, which is heavy with women in out there in, in accounting and stuff. When I came back here in my career, I, is in Utah. To be a woman in accounting in Utah um, is a unique situation. (laughs) I am always in meetings where I am the only woman. And we did a presentation a couple weeks ago where I introduced myself and gave my background of having stayed home with my children and then back at work now. And one of the men in the room um, came over to me and said, well, you know that there's nothing better you should be doing than being home with your children. Oh, and I was like, I am home with my kids. They're in school right now. Like, like I, it was a little, um, you know, the way I, you know, this is how I wanted, this is how I'm doing it. And it's, it's a very personal thing, but there is a cultural thing. I mean, I'm LDS, I, I'm a believer. Um, and I wanted to be home with my kids, but there is definite culture that, that, that I've had some fun with in the last year. So it does exist um, in certain places. Hold on a second. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. When I was at the CPA firm at PricewaterhouseCoopers, we were about evenly split male and female in Dallas. And then I went over to Goldman Sachs, and I was the first female analyst they had ever hired in their office ever. The only women were support people. And they acted like they'd never like, seen a girl before. <laughs> and um, at first, it was frustrating to me. And then over time, I... I realized how much value we have as women, and I hope that y'all don't underestimate some of the unique gifts and talents that God gives women that some of the men don't have, and maybe we're not as good of golfers, but maybe you can connect with a client on a level that they've never been connected with before in a business setting. 
And um, there are soft ways that we can support and do our jobs in wonderful ways that are just different from men. And so don't ever be intimidated by it or try to compete with it, but just do your very best to blossom your own way in your in your abilities and what God has given you. Yeah. And you know, there are more women out there that are owning their own businesses. And it's, I, I, I find it flattering when I have a male partner come to me and say, you know, we have this new client, she's a woman, she wants to work with a woman. I'm like, yes, you know, I would love to work with her. I understand that. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, there's, there's a place for us. You know, we might be, I mean, I, have, I, haven't, I work with mostly men at the higher levels. It's probably 50-50 up to manager. And then as soon as everybody makes manager, they start dropping off. But, um, you know, I, I hope that in the future that the women ratio of partners is higher. But there's a place for us. Yeah, we are so grateful that each of you came to participate on this panel. That was helpful for me. And I think all of us to just hear from your different experiences and especially hear of a different ways of approaching this kind of work-life balance issue that I think a lot of us feel even now we're worried about now. So we are grateful for each of you for coming.